Hi everyone and welcome back for another episode in our AI tutorial series. In the last episodes we were looking at patrol paths and we got our NPC here to patrol around a path and then to decide whether it needs to loop round or go back on itself. We've done all that. So if you've been following along you should have all that and you should have had the first parts where we looked at making the AI chase the player. So what we're going to do today is combine them together so that the AI, the plan is for the AI to walk its path until it sees the player then it'll start chasing the player and then if it loses the player it'll return back to its pa uh, patrol path so it's similar sort of behavior that you'd see in like a stealth game like Metal Gear Solid so for this we're going to go into our behavior tree and here's our two parts we've got the patrol path section which I've, I've labeled by going on to the right hand side here patrol path okay so we've got that side and then we also got this stuff over here from the previous uh, when we've done the chasing of the player so we're going to combine these two together i'm going to bring my root my first selector over and the other code i need is this can see player one this right hand side one here i don't need the other one because the other one is where it does random locations okay we don't want to do random locations we just want to do the patrol path when it can't see the player so with the selector we're going to go down to the can see player chasing the player node okay 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 so how it decides what it needs to do now similar to what we've done over here we've done the blackboard base condition for the can see players not set uh, we're going to do exactly the same over here on the patrol path so right go onto your patrol path right click add decorator blackboard click on the blackboard base condition node here and this condition is going to be the blackboard key can see player and we'll check that it is not set so if can see player is not set it will do patrol path and if it is set it will do this so before we move on we need to tell this so if we're patrolling to cancel the patrolling when it sees the player so we're going to abort everything click on the blackboard base condition and on the right hand side go observer aborts and aborts both that means that when the blackboard value changes, this will abort everything it's doing and cancel everything it's doing and reevaluate what it needs to do next. Okay, so that's kind of it. So let's click save and click play. Now he'll walk around and when he sees me, he should chase me. Okay, so and if I can break line of sight quickly, he should return. Oh, there he is. Rip return to his patrol path. Like so. So, we're going to add a bit more to this. Um, we're going to make him so he, that when he's patrolling, he's walking slow. And when he's chasing, he's walking fast. Or running fast at you. So, we're going to do that on the behavior tree. You can do it all on here. And we're going to use something called a service. So, a service is a sort of piece of code that you want to run. Um, it may not lead to any nodes. Or anything like that. It's just a bit of code that you want to run. Okay? Based on one of these... Uh, sequences or selectors so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up top here where you've got new task new decorator and new service click on new service and likewise i'm going to go like we have done before go back straight in once we've, once we've created it go back straight into the content browser and rename it and the name which is going to be is going to be change mpc speed and now you've got this service so the service has four events, has activation, deactivation, search, start, and tick. We want the activation. So this will trigger as soon as it is activated. So as soon as it come, uh, as soon as it starts, it's kind of like a begin play, uh, how it triggers. So when it's activated, what we're going to do is we're going to change the speed of this uh NPC to a value that we're going to set on here. So to do that, you get the owner actor. Then the owner actor is going to return an AI controller because that's what our behavior tree is running on. So we need to cast this first of all to our NPC AI controller. And as the AI controller, we're going to get the controlled pawn. And 
Oh, unless, do we, did we already have, get, get my pawn, there we go. So we already had this, get my pawn. This is a reference to the, the actual pawn actor of the NPC AI. Uh, previously, we must have done it somewhere else, yep. Yeah, we did it up here, where we stored the reference to the pawn that this AI control belongs to. So to save some casting and save some CPU time, uh, we can go into our change NPC and just use the my pawn reference. That's referring to this here. Here. Okay. So this is my pawn. And from my pawn, as you see, if I hover over it, it says NPC object reference. It knows what it is. It has an NPC object reference. From there, we can get the character movement. And you scroll down, it's this blue one at the bottom here. And that gets the movement component of the pawn. And from there, we can set max walk speed as a value. Now, rather than just typing a value here, we're going to use a variable. So I'm going to show you, I will explain why that'd be better in a second. But click on the variables and add a new variable. And I'm going to call it speed. And we'll make it a float. And you want to tick instance editable. Click compile and drag your speed into your max walk speed. So your final blueprint should look like this. Okay. Back on your behavior tree, we can now add that to our tree. So on the patrol path sequence, where we've done the blackboard base condition just now, you want to right click, add service, and you want to do change NPC speed. So when this goes through, go gets past this bit, and then starts the sequence. When it starts the sequence, it's going to change the NPC speed. Now, if I go onto the right hand side here on details with it selected, you can see that speed variable showing up. Because I ticked the instance editable, I can choose what speed I want the enemy to patrol its path at. I'm going to make it go at 90. Actually, it'd go 100. Go at a speed of 100. And then on this one, when it's chasing a player. We're going to add the service again, change in PC speed, choose the speed, and type in 600. So now, when I go back to my game, he'll walk his path, but as he's walking, if he sees the player, he'll start chasing me. So the benefit of this is if you want him to walk a bit slower, we can go into the uh, behavior tree and just type in the speed value here to whatever value we want. Say like 500 for example. Now he'll still be fast, but I should be able to outrun him if I keep running away from him far enough. Now, as you can see, if I break line of sight, it will slow down and return to his pathing. So, the next thing we need to do is put in the caution bit where he starts searching for the player. So when he can't see the player anymore, we don't want him just to go straight to his path. We want him to search for the player. And that's what we can do in the next part. So join us in the next part where we add the caution and search for the player. And we're going to do that thing that you see in a lot of stealth games where the enemy will, uh, when they lose sight of you, will go to your last known position. Okay. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to watch that next part right now, head over to patreon.com. Uh, forward slash Ryan Laley and if you want to support me there you get to see that video plus many others um, before anyone else uh, thanks very much uh, for watching if you have any questions or queries leave them in the comments below and if you want any other particular AI behavior that we haven't seen yet please put it into comments below and I'll add it to the list to do thanks very much for watching and I'll again see you guys uh, sorry see you guys again in the future sometime soon bye guys